Ladies and gentlemen, we present the Navy Lark with our three stars, John Pertwee, Leslie Phillips and Stephen Murray. The trouble with women is that they don't like things to drift. They always like things to be neat and tidy. Wren Chasen is no exception, and she's about to tidy things up by having a dust-up with Sub-Lieutenant Phillips over their engagement. Oh, come on, then. How about giving Leslie Kins a plonker? No. Oh, but Captain Povey won't be back for hours yet. Captain Povey's movements have got nothing to do with it. I've just decided that until certain things have been sorted out, Leslie Kins can remain plonkerless. <laughs> what? But I, but I like plonkers. So I'd noticed. However, I've been on the phone to my mother. Oh, Lord. I, I mean, oh, uh, <laughs> really? <laughs> how, how is Mummy? Puzzled. Puzzled? Yes. In her day, when two people got engaged, they usually got married, eventually. Oh, yes, of course, and times haven't changed. We, we, we shall get married. <laughs> 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 Eventually. Of course we shall. Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Only she wants to know when. Oh, naturally. She wrote to what? She pointed out that we've been engaged for well over a year now. Well, what of it? I happen to believe in long engagements. Possibly, but Mother doesn't. She's made that quite clear on the telephone. In fact, she said very little else for ten minutes, even though it was a long-distance call. I jolly well hope you reverse the charges. I got the operator to charge the call to your wardroom account, actually. Oh, well, that's all right. It's a, it's, a, it's a bit of a liberty. I mean, honestly, next time I'll give you a stamp and you can write. Am I to take it that you resent me spending a few paltry shillings on my mother? No, of course not, darling. You can spend as many paltry shillings as you like on her. What bothers me is you spending my paltry shillings on it. <laughs> Sub Lieutenant Phillips, you're avoiding the issue. When are we going to get married? Or have you changed your mind? Well, of course. I think we'd agree that we wouldn't get married until I'd saved up. So we could have a nice little cottage that was all of our own. And just how much have you saved up for this nice little cottage so far? Well, within a pound or two, um... Eight and fourpence. <laughs> I see. Well, you've got 24 hours to do something about it. If you haven't come around to some definite plans for our future by this time tomorrow, I shall seriously consider breaking off our engagement. What? But you can't do that. I, I've still got four instalments to pay on the ring. I, 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 what's all the rush? I mean, what, what, what's wrong with waiting for a bit? If we wait as long as you'd like us to, we'll both have forgotten what we were waiting for. Oh, nonsense. <laughs> you really mean this, don't you? I do. Thank you. I now pronounce you... Ma I, I mean, um, <laughs> Lummy, you've got me all confused. I, I can't even remember what I came here for now. A plonker. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, how about giving plonker bonkers a Leslie Kins? Hmm? I, I mean, that is, um... Ah, I thought I might find you here. How are our two lovebirds today? One of them is about to flutter off. <laughs> we seem to have got a long-distance cuckoo in the nest, sir. <laughs> I take it you're having a bit of a tiff. No, of course not. Certainly the not. The very idea. Quite ridiculous. Ludicrous. Absolutely. Oh, good. Otherwise, I was going to suggest you made it up by giving Leslie Kings a quick plonker. Oh, well, really? I think we'd better leave, you know. Well, yes, we had, actually. That's why I was looking for you. Captain Povey's aboard Trugbridge, and he wants to see the pair of us and CPO Pertwee at once. Why, what have you done this time? <laughs> now, I rather gather it's to do with some top brass fleet exercise or other, and we're liable to have to put to sea at once. Then I hope it won't be for very long. Leslie Kins is due back here in 24 hours sharp for another high-level conference. Now, I shall look forward to it. <laughs> Darling... So shall I, <laughs> darling. <laughs> I don't believe it, sir. You're having us on, aren't you? You, you must be, Captain Bowie, sir. <laughs> you, you, you're not really going to send us out to float about in the middle of a top brass fleet exercise, surely? I am. Uh, and needless to say, I have no choice. I realise only too well that for Troutbridge to be at sea amongst all the other ships of the fleet could well be the end of the British Navy. <laughs> <laughs> Your frigate is the only one here? Well, I wonder where all the other frigates and destroyers had gone. I was beginning to think we'd sailed through something unfortunate. Nobody would tell us. Oh, no, no, no. No, every other ship is taking part in the exercise. Unfortunately, one frigate has had to drop out through engine failure, and I have been ordered to send Troutbridge to replace her. Well, it serves him right for not inviting us in the first place, I'd say. <laughs> uh, what 
exactly will our duties be during this exercise, Captain Purvey? Well, fortunately, it is practically over, so there'll be very little. The exercise has been taking place off the Weymouth and Lyme Regis area, and you'll join the fleet there. Oh. Well, it's a nice theory. <laughs> it just so happens that I know the way. <laughs> Maybe you do, sir, but can you tell our little boot how to get there? <laughs> he better. Admiralty started this exercise, and there are more admirals, rear admirals, and top brass aboard the flagship than there are ratings sailing her. The whole lot have turned up. Oh, dear. You mean it's a sort of Admiralty works outing? Yes, I, I am afraid so. Now, your main job will be to take over the task of bringing the Admiral's barge and Captain's pinnace back to Plymouth after they've finished with them. You'll then return back here to Portsmouth. Why have they got the barge and the pinnace with them on a fleet exercise, sir? Well, I imagine they're to be used for transporting all the senior, and I do mean senior, officers ashore for a monumental nosh-up after the exercise. It's the custom. Yes, it's also the custom for all those left behind and every frigate and destroyer in the exercise to mutter short, sharp ruderies as they clean up the muck and havoc and I hate to see the high rank and oi polloi have left behind them. <laughs> exactly. Usually the Admiral takes his party to dinner at a place in West Bay. Yes, so we've heard, sir. And having clouted the hot caviar and chips, they then belt off and knock six kinds of brick dust out of Bridport. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I believe that is the general form. However, all you have to concern yourselves with is getting the barge and the pinnace back to Plymouth as soon as the Admiral's party have stopped knocking six kinds of... <laughs> <laughs> have returned to the flagship. You leave it to us, sir. <laughs> I have already explained I have no choice. Now, sail for West Bay immediately and anchor off the harbour until you hear from the flagship. When are we due back, sir? Well, I don't imagine there'll be much delay. The party is this evening, so you should be back about lunchtime tomorrow. Oh, bother. I beg your pardon? Well, I was hoping it would take weeks <laughs> so that I could dodge giving a long-distance cuckoo an answer. <laughs> really? No doubt that makes some sort of sense to you, and we'll leave it at that. Now, put to sea, gentlemen, and keep an eye on the Met reports. There's quite a chance of rough weather. <laughs> oh, thank you, sir. That's cheered us up no end. <laughs> left hand... Um, left hand down a lummy. <laughs> left hand down a lummy? <laughs> No, I meant Lummy. Captain Poe was right about the rough weather. It's pouring down in buckets. What's, what? Oh. what what's the latest Met Office report? Bright periods. <laughs> Stone me, I wish they'd come out here and say that, sir. So do I. Wherever this is. Exactly. Oh, not again. Well, it's not my fault if we're lost this time. And in this weather, nothing looks the same. We, we should have come here on a fine day. What's he talking about? Let's ask. <laughs> well, how am I supposed to know which bit of sea this is? I mean, out there it's all muddy and dark. On my charts, it's a pretty blue. <laughs> Bridge number one here. Starboard lookout here, sir. Leading seaman Goldstein chatting. Or what's left of him, that is. <laughs> what's it like out there? I won't answer that, sir. Not wanting a court martial. <laughs> However, in case you're interested, which I doubt, about every two minutes a dirty great wave hits me straight in the mush. <laughs> which is what you might call tiresome. Yeah, what was that? I said about every two minutes a dirty great wave hits me. <laughs> ah! oh. <clears throat> 1,500 stinking gallons right in the mush again. <laughs> Look, Goldstein, what do you want? A towel for a start. <laughs> then a dry change of clothes, hot dinner, pint of rum and a new career. <laughs> I've had this lot. Oh, oh, whilst you're ordering that little lot up for me, you might like to know that between drenchings, I can see the rest of the fleet at anchor. Well, thank goodness for that. How close are they? Eh, uh, Hang on, I'll just have another look to make... Ah! Oh! You steaming, backhanded, double-dealing, filthy... What did he say, sir? With children like Mr Phillips about, I thought it best not to let him finish. <laughs> Coming up to the fleet now, I gather. Yeah, yes, but which way? Uh, where, where are they? <laughs> there, sir. <laughs> Lummy. 
I wonder which ship that was. The one on the other side of that one, sir. <laughs> you keep going long enough and you're bound to clobber the flagship eventually. <laughs> yes, well, we ought to let the top brass know we've arrived. And, ah, 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 back a bit upwards. Back a bit upwards. No, no, no. no, no. no. Uh, I'll be sideways. Up, no. uh, pull ahead in reverse. Reverse, no, no, Scrub that. Scrub it, uh, you think of one. Uh, no, no, too late. <laughs> it's my turn. Yeah. I, I mean, right hand. No, right left, hand. left, left. No, 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 both of them. No, no, I mean, both of them. No, no, neither of them. No, stop, stop engines. Stop no, engines. Start, start them again. Start them again. No, don't, don't, don't. No, I can see where, I, I can't see who I am. I mean, where am I? Who, who, who are you? No, who? Somebody do something. I'm a nervous wreck. Nervous wreck it is, sir. Yo. Head for the harbour, chief, and anchor off that. We just had to hope this little storm blows itself out quickly. I wouldn't like to say our anchors will hold in seas like this. Thank you, sir. That's all I needed. A little bit of cheering news. <laughs> Hello, Bridge, CPO Pertwee panicking. Lieutenant, ba <laughs> Lieutenant Bates here, old man. Just thought you'd all like to know, wireless room has just received another Met report. Very nice of them, sir. What do they expect this time? Further outlook unsettled. <laughs> then theirs isn't, sir. If we ever get back from this lot, I'll settle their outlook for good and all. <laughs> I'll boot a lot of them right in their millibars. <laughs> On bridge, you silly old fool! Yes, yes, that's me, yes. Oh, no, no, it isn't. <laughs> I'm a silly old, uh, I mean, uh, uh, yes, Admiral. Drink up, the lot of you. I've had enough. Me nosh up's over. Get the fools together and we'll go and bash six kinds of brick dust on a Bridport. <laughs> yes, capital idea. Yes, yes. What? Oh, no, 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 not again. No, no, only just rebuilt the town hall from last time. Yes, yes. Oh, do stop waffling on, Iron Bridge. Fetch the others. Where's Rear Admiral Arlington Bolt? Hi, Jumbo, what are you doing? Uh, I'm, I'm just finishing up the last of the... <coughs> <laughs> Very good year it was, too. <laughs> uh, it wasn't bad, was it? If you like that sort of muck. Right, get your coat, we're off. Couldn't we give it a miss, as your Admiral? It took the Council three days to remove the horse that we shunted into the public <laughs> last year, didn't we? <laughs> oh, good man, Jumbo, knew you'd be pleased. <coughs> well, ready when you are, follow me. <coughs> you know, Ironbridge, I don't know how you <coughs> about it, but uh, sometimes I think the Admiral's a stupid old... <coughs> <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely, yes, yes, a stupid old... <coughs> Yeah. <laughs> I knew you'd <laughs> with me. Oh, do stop chuntering on all of you. Brick dust bashing time. Off we go. Oh. Three big ideas of monsoon. Blow that for a lock. Bridport has had it as far as I'm concerned. Me treat's off. No brick dust bashing this year. Uh, I can't say I'm sorry, Admiral. Going out in that stuff wouldn't do my oh, any good at all. <laughs> no, no, definitely not. No. No. Well, hard luck on Bridport, of course. They'll miss us. Still, there it is. Get the car, somebody. I'm going back to me barge. We'll knock the stuffing out of me flagship's wardroom instead. Wow. <laughs> oh, for pity's sake, put your foot down, Red Chase. We must get to West Bay before the Admiral's party is over. I I've got to know what's going on. With Troutbridge in the area and weather like this, anything can happen. Well, to be honest, I wouldn't think the state of the weather makes all that difference. But they should never have been sent out with the seas as rough as this. Troutbridge may be able to stand it, but I'm sure they can't. Well, just so long as they ride the storm out at anchor, they should be all right. But they won't. It's all my fault. They'll try and get back. I know they will. They'd better not. In any case, why should they? They've never bothered to obey my instructions before. Yes, but they weren't yours, sir. They were mine. What? <laughs> To Mr. Phillips, sir. You see, I told him I wanted a certain matter cleared up within 24 hours. And he'll tackle anything, no matter how dangerous, to get back to me. I know he will. Oh, good grief. Are you sure? Oh, positive. I issued an ultimatum. He'll stop at nothing to get back to me. If anything, it's getting worse. Good show. <laughs> Leslie's in no hurry. It can keep this up for days if it likes. You know, sir, if I had a suspicious mind, I'd say that you have an ulterior motive <laughs> for staying out here. I don't think you want to get back to Pompey. I don't. At least not for another seven hours and 54 minutes. <laughs> seven hours? Here, it's an alibi. He's establishing an alibi, sir. It must be. Had you been the one who didn't want to get back, I'd have jumped to that conclusion too, Chief. 
However, with Mr. Phillips as the reluctant traveller, I feel there may be some other reason. There is. I'm trying to show Heather who's boss. Oh, surely she knows that by now. <laughs> well, yes, yes, but I'm trying to appeal against the decision. <laughs> Take that, will you, Mr. Phillips? Uh, where to, sir? Uh, I mean, I mean, um... Chief. Right, sir. Bridge. See if you will you? Lieutenant Bates here, old man. <clears throat> New Met report. Oh, yes, sir. And what little pearl of wisdom have they come up with this time? Continuing cloudy and dull with occasional showers. Oh. Well, do you think we ought to send them a signal to say it's blowing like blazes and raining like... No, no, no. But... Might spoil their day. Oh, while I'm having a word, I'm rather afraid one of our anchors is dragging and something metallic is making the most dreadful noise against our stern. Oh, blimey, that's all we needed. Tell number one, would you? Yeah, I shall, sir, with the utmost alacrimity. <laughs> Here, stern anchors dragging, sir. What? We'll swing round in ever-decreasing... Exactly, sir. <laughs> Bridge, number one here. Starboard lookout, yes, sir. Leading seaman. Oops! <laughs> Goldstein complete with W board you're chatting. What is it now? Some sort of boss signal being flashed from the harbour, sir. I can't quite make out uh, what it is, but I think it's coming from the Admiral's party, sir. All right, I'll look into it. Much obliged, sir, because every time I try to look into it, I cop another load of. <laughs> 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 It's all right, sir. I can see the signal starting again. Hang on, I'll read it. Um, da da di da di di da diddle 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 diddle. <laughs> Spaces in between, sir. Oh. Da da dit dot dish dat dash dit dot uh, diddle 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 da da dit message ends. What did it say? Hmm. Well, um, da da dit da dit dit da dit. <laughs> message ends, I suppose. Now we know something else our master mariner doesn't have a clue about, don't we? Uh, excuse me, sir. Yeah, what is it, Johnson? Uh, well, it's signal from Weymouth, sir. It's from the Admiral, sir. And he's not happy. No, uh, he's not. You know, he's definitely not happy. You can tell by his tone. He's not happy. <laughs> Funny, that, isn't it? He may have had a party, but he's not happy. <laughs> if you ask me. We, we, didn't. we didn't. Oh, well, in that case, I'm not happy either. <laughs> Bert, we take that signal and read it, for goodness sake. Uh, right, sir. Message reads, Creeping, Ivy. Are you all having a kip? <laughs> Have worn out three oldest lamps, flashing signals at you. Stop. Can't use me barge, so for pity's sake, pick us up from harbour and transport us back to flagship. Stop. Admiral, stop. And start now. Stop. <laughs> oh, dear. I, I don't like that idea very much. P.S. Some fool woman called Wren Chasen says, tell Mr. Phillips she's put a light in the window. Stop. <laughs> Come home, all is forgiven. Stop. I'm not sure I like that bit very much, are <laughs> Why not, sir? It sounds as if you're in the clear. Well, it could be a trap. Once I set foot on shore, she'll start issuing ultimatums again. And her mum is the biggest ultimator I know. <laughs> Shall I, shall I send a signal saying we're not going to pick the Admiral up then, sir? Uh, no, Johnson, do that and he'll definitely be not happy. No, we'll just have to try and do the best we can. Well, I don't like it. No, I don't like it at all. Look, definitely not. No, not at all. No! <laughs> That's what I like. Blind confidence. <laughs> now, just a minute. You're not expecting me to navigate in this stuff, are you? Well, with your navigation, the weather doesn't really matter, does it? <laughs> In any case, we've no choice. Somehow, we've got to get the Admiral and his party out of this debacle. <laughs> De what? Oh, please. <laughs> debacle. That's the thing that's worse than de be. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. You've heard that, surely. Debacle be worse than de. Perhaps I don't tell them very well. <laughs> cast off off. Well, according to Mr. Bates, sir, we already have, sir. Oh, yes. Uh, cast off for us. Cast off for us, sir. I'm Navigator, and I am here, you know. What? <laughs> oh, sorry, pardon. Carry on. Thank you. Slow ahead both, Chief. Slow ahead both it is, sir. Well, if nobody minds, I'm going below again. I know what's going to happen, but I prefer not to actually watch it. <laughs> Coward! Just look out, destroy our head. Where? There. It was make peace. Sorry, pardon, make peace. Oh, that's all right, old daughters. 
when you're about, we're used to it. <laughs> Here, look out, sir. We're swinging over to that aircraft carrier. What? Oh, lummy. We're practically under a star. Uh, back a bit. Back a bit, I, I mean, over your way. My way. No, help. 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 I, I can't see. Uh, left hand. Well done, you missed. <laughs> Unless you count leaving our radar mast behind. <laughs> oh, never mind that. What's next? Goldstein, probably. Hello, bridge number one here. Ah! Oh, what's going on? Well, I suppose you'd call it navigation. Well, that's not what I'd call it. Apart from being knee-deep in old fish, I'm being clobbered by old iron now. <laughs> oh, that was our radar mast. Was it? Well, next time you want to get rid of one, don't chuck it at me. <laughs> Jolly nearly caught me in the... <laughs> ah! Oh. <coughs> you wait. When this lot's over, I'm suing the lot of you for alienation of affections for breathing. <laughs> A harbour ahead, sir. Strange as it may seem. I'll ignore that. We'll go into starboard. Easy now. Easy. Easy? In this weather, you're kidding. Watch it, set of stars coming round. It'll clout the jetty. No, it won't. We'll make it. <laughs> well, we nearly did. <laughs> Yet now where are we going? We're running parallel to the coast, sir. Yes, so we... Uh, no, no, look, uh, there's something ahead. It's another jetty. No, it's not, sir. It's a loading stage for a timber yard. What? <laughs> oh, well, if they were going to make matches out of that lot, we've saved them the trouble. <laughs> now, where have they gone? What, sir? The barrels of our two four-inch guns. Oh, blimey. Yeah, uh, pull us on both, Chief. Quick, or we'll never get back to the harbour. Pull us on both, Chief. Now, just a minute, just a minute. Oh, uh, shut up. Port 10 degrees. Port 10 degrees. No, well, really. Steady. Steady, sir. Now, may I remind you that yes, I have... Look out, there's something adrift the stand. Stop engines. Stop engines, sir. No, no, pull ahead. What's going on? Pull ahead, sir. Too late. Stow me. You know what that was, sir, don't you? What? Admiral's barge and captain's pinnace adrift from their moorings. <laughs> and now in tiny, tiny bits. Oh, no. <laughs> Amateurs. <laughs> the harbour's coming up again, sir. Well, thank heaven for that. This time, for pity's sake, get in and not through it, or we'll never hear the last of this. I rather doubt if we shall anyway. <laughs> And I can't say how grateful and honoured we are, Admiral, that you have come back with us to my office to investigate this matter. Well, these are the chaps from Crowdbridge, are they? Uh, yes, sir, I'm afraid we are. But we don't expect to be for much longer, sir. <laughs> what was our final score, sir? Well, it's early days for a full report yet. But so far, we know you hit three destroyers, mm. two frigates, an aircraft carrier, a timber yard, wrecked the harbour, lost your radar mast, lost two four-inch guns, and swept the telephone kiosk off the jetty. <laughs> hmm. Not bad. <laughs> Not bad? It was flaming marvellous. Arnbridge and Jumbo reckoned all that beat bashing six kinds of brick dust out of Bridport hollow. <laughs> what? But, but surely, Edmund, you can't allow them to get away with... Oh, do <laughs> stop waffling, Povey. There'll be an investigation, of course, but I'll soon sort that out. Blame the Met Office, that's the thing. <laughs> I've been wanting to get me own back on those idiots ever since my last leave. Sunshine all the way, they said. Fools. It was the first time they'd had snow in Madrid. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's very good of you, sir. We... We did our best. Oh, don't apologise. It was excellent. Best cabaret my party's seen in years. <laughs> if the weather's lousy next year, you must do it again. <laughs> well, cheerio, Povey. Give my regards to your wife, if you meet her. I, I, I don't believe it. I, I, I just don't believe it. You do thousands and thousands of pounds of damage, and he wants you to do it all again next year. Well, we were pretty spectacular, sir. <laughs> Excuse me, sir, I have a call from Mr. Phillips on the telephone. Why, no, very well, he'd better take it outside. I haven't finished with Murray and Pertwee yet. Oh, thanks, sir. Uh, this way, Mr. Phillips. Mm -hmm. And if there's a call for me, you won't hesitate to interrupt to tell me, will you? I need one. Of course not. 
A call from me? I wasn't expecting anyone to ring. It's that phone over there. Dear. Oh, really? Yes, hurry up. It's long distance. Mm. Don't keep Mother waiting. Right, I'll... Ah! Um, I'm, I'm out. I'm ill. I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I've lost my voice. Then you'd better find it again. Here you are, dear. Start talking. What? No, I'd, I'd rather... Oh, hello. Hello. Mother. How nice... What? I can, no, I can explain. Who, who's paying for this? Now, please. Look, all up. Hello? Uh, mother. 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 Hello? Hello? Leslie Phillips, Stephen Murray and John Pertwee have been bashing six kinds of brick dust out of the Navy Lark, written by Laurie Wyman. Leslie Phillips was the sub-lieutenant, Stephen Murray was the number one, John Pertwee was the chief petty officer, Captain Povey was played by Richard Caldicott, Heather was Heather Chasen, Abel Seaman Johnson was Ronnie Barker, the Admiral was Tenniel Evans, and Lieutenant Bates was played by Michael Bates. The recorded production was by Alistair Scott Johnston. The Navy Lark was presented by the BBC.